Welcome to our Red Hats Government Symposium Executive Insight Series. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and we're here with Frank DeMuzio, Senior Manager for State and Local Government and Education in Hybrid Cloud for Red Hat. Frank, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks for having me. Let me start by asking, where have you seen some examples of how government has looked to data to fuel digital transformation? Yeah, I think when you when you look at technology in general and you look at some of the transformational changes that governments are looking to make, it, in a lot of cases, it's all centered around data, right? How do you make data more available? How do you make it more useful? How do you make it more meaningful um, to users to provide for, you know, improved levels of experience and convenience? I know it, in a lot of cases, like as data gets closer to the end user, technology can become much more um, line of business specific, or in this case, government specific, right? When you look at typical or traditional technology solutions, right, they're generic by design. Then oftentimes they have to be appropriated for you know, specific government needs. But I think if you look at kind of the focus more on, on data and how government agencies are trying to make that data more, um, kind of more meaningful, more rich in terms of its content, and then being able to um, do analytics against it or extract meaning from it. It allows, allows government and the technology groups within the government to really provide services that are much closer to the actual citizen needs and experiences. Well, how would you say that open source technology is played an important role as the government has faced a number of critical challenges like COVID-19's response. Yeah, I think if, if you look at open source technology um, and how it impacts some of these critical areas, there's really three big areas where I think personally it makes an impact uh, and provides really a strategic advantage for government agencies. So the first is it provides speed and flexibility so when you look at open source technology, it allows the government to select platforms and make application design decisions and make um, line of business decisions based on the obstacles that are right in front of it, right? So a lot of times with more traditional proprietary technology, you're locked into a specific way of doing things or a specific way of having to attack the problem. Open source provides the flexibility to allow the government to make changes as they come up, right? And I think um, when you look at that and you also look at how customizable the solutions can be and how quickly they can be uh, productionized and brought to market, um, there's tremendous, there's tremendous um, opportunity there. I know uh, one government agency, for example, um, at the state and local level, was able to use open source as part of a COVID-19 response when, you, when there was a large number of uh, employees in work from home conditions. Um, they looked at their IT operations footprint and they knew they, knew they needed, uh, in this case, automation technology to be able to address a lot of the operational work streams that they normally would have in the office. And they'd had to do it in a way maybe now that required even more of a security presence than they had before. And so um, in that case, they selected open source tools to do it because it allowed them to rapidly provision and make adjustments based on the very specific needs that were in front of them. So I would say the first is definitely provides speed and flexibility. I think the second is that generally speaking, open source solutions um, and technologies are lower cost, right? So when you're dealing with crisis situations, not only do you need to move quickly, but you also need to be judicious with what the expenditures are going to look like. And so um, I think time and time again, open source technology has proven to be, have lower total operating costs uh, and definitely lower maintenance costs over time. Um, and then finally, I think security is another aspect that's in incredibly important as the government deals with some of these critical situations. So um, open source software and open source technologies are inherently more secure than their proprietary counterparts. They have more people constantly looking at the code, seeking, identifying, and fixing vulnerabilities. And I think if you look at the communities and commercial vendors that support these technologies, they can issue remediations more quickly. So I would say just to summarize, speed and flexibility, um, lower cost, and greater security are all reasons why 
um, open source technology makes a big impact in government agencies in crisis situations, excuse me, crisis situations like COVID-19. Makes a lot of sense. Let me expand a little bit on that last point of yours. How does open source actually enable better cybersecurity for agencies? Yeah, exactly. And, and as previously mentioned, one part of it is there's more eyes on the code, right? There's more people that are constantly looking for exposure or attack vectors and issuing remediations uh, against that. Um, but I think it also allows government agencies or any organization for that matter to apply security best practices across the entire infrastructure and application stack and life cycle. So um, open source technology allows you to build security into your applications. It allows you to deploy applications on a hardened platform and then manage, automate, and adapt your infrastructure and application security patterns as your compliance requirements change. I guess in short, one of the nice things about open source is that you're enabled to provide kind of best practice applications of security across all the different layers of your data center and your IT footprint. Well, and then lastly, Frank, what trends or technologies uh, should agencies be paying attention to in the coming year? Yeah, and that's, that's, that's a tough question, right? There's so many different things that, um, that the government should be paying attention to. And obviously there's so many different rapid areas of development in, in the technology space in general. But I think there's three areas in particular where the government should really pay attention to. The first is edge computing and the advancements that we're seeing there. The second is kind of data science and artificial intelligence capabilities. And the third is kind of rapid evolving, the rapid evolution of managed cloud services platforms and how agencies can take advantage of that. So if you look at the first one in edge computing, right, it provides an incredible opportunity for government agencies to continue down the path of digital transformation that they've been making in their data center, but in an accelerated format. Right, so um, all of the kind of modernization activity that government agencies are making in their existing data center footprint actually accelerates when you get to the edge, when you get to the users and their data, right? And that goes back to the, my response on the first question, right? How like everything is being centered around the data, right? That helps drive more tailored solutions for specific government problems because the data is closer, it's more accessible to the, the end user, right? In this case, the citizens probably most likely. Uh, like we're seeing this a lot right now in the, in the telco industry, for example, um, with you know, specific tailored solutions to support uh, the evolution of, of edge networking and kind of 5G mobile broadband other solutions in that area. So that's the first part. For data science and AI, I think that allows governments to make informed decisions that are data-driven. Uh, and can greatly improve citizen or civic engagement. It also helps, I think, government agencies make business decisions that are more predictable and easier to plan around. Because we all know, like in those crisis situations, oftentimes there's emotional responses to problems, but I think it's really important to have rational, kind of logical responses to problems. And, and data science and kind of artificial intelligence capabilities provide that type of of informed kind of data-driven model so that we can make the best decisions uh, for our citizens. Uh, and then I think it, it also helps with, you know, that space with, with, um, with security, right? So improving the security or the, the posture of data security. Uh, think about using things like artificial intelligence around fraud detection systems that can keep sensitive information safe from uh, would be attackers, you know, precious citizen or government information can remain secure. Uh, and then finally, I think an area where government agencies should really focus and kind of keep, keep watch on is uh, managed cloud services and kind of the evolution and kind of rapid deployment that we're seeing there. And, and obviously people have been talking about cloud for a long time. I think, you know, you see the government moving from cloud first to cloud smart, I think as a, as a philosophy. And I think like a lot of the advancements in being able to consume services in a managed format can really enable that cloud smart uh, position, right? So uh, cloud services obviously can enable quick and easy onboarding 
of applications um, and, and can allow for quicker prototyping of services. Uh, and then I think it can also it can also make some of the maybe more traditionally complex or hard to consume emerging technologies available or more accessible um, for key government services. So it allows them to make a kind of rapid uh, pivot and provide faster services to citizens, but do it in a way that's that's judicious and cloud smart. So those are the three big areas or three areas of the industry that I think government agencies should be focused on uh, in the coming year. Really appreciate your outlining those. Well, Frank Demuzio, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to share your insights on that and uh, for joining us today. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And thanks to our audience for tuning in as well.